Und sie hassen uns mit Recht. Genauso wie wir sie hassen. Wir sind uns im Klaren, dass dieser Krieg, der nur damit enden könnte, dass entweder die germanischen Völker ausgerottet werden oder dass das Judentum aus Europa verschwindet. Ich habe... Hitler's Germany killed six million Jews. Now a British author claims Hitler himself was not responsible, didn't order the deaths, even at times tried to stop them. A work of history or a work of propaganda? Tonight, David Irving face to face with his critics. Good evening. Um, history is a continual process of re-examination and reinterpretation based on new facts, new questions. And if there are reasons for seeing Adolf Hitler in a different, less unfavorable light, then obviously that's an enormously important, indeed even traumatic, reassessment. But are there such reasons for doing so? On my left is David Irving, whose new book, Hitler's War, is in fact the touchstone that's ignited, if touchstones can ignite, the new controversy. On my right, Professor Robert Waite, Professor of History from Williams College, Massachusetts, who has a new book, The Psychopathic God, Adolf Hitler, his study of Adolf Hitler about to appear. And on my far right, Senior Lecturer at Surrey University, Gerald Fleming, where he runs a seminar on the Third Reich. But, uh, David Irving, let me turn to you first. In one of the key passages of the book, uh, you say, quoting the movement of the Jews to the East, no documentary evidence exists that Hitler was aware that the Jews were being massacred upon their arrival. This is a very bold statement. Has anybody else ever dared to make a statement that no documentary evidence exists? Well, over the years, historians have always been aware that documentary evidence was a great scarcity, as Alan Bullock in his own review of your book says. We've known that for donkeys. There are years. millions of tons of documents uh, that were generated by the Second World War. Tens of thousands of tons in the National Archives in Washington alone, for example. It's just that it has taken decades to work through them, to catalogue them, to find out where the files are, and it took me ten years to go through the catalogues and make use of the existing documentation until I could state with confidence there is no documentation on that. Well, I have never seen, to put it another way, to put it the bullock way or whatever, I have never seen people saying that this specific documentary evidence kill six million Jews signed a Hitler nobody has ever said that did exist nobody of any importance where you've gone so much further is in saying and issuing the thousand dollar challenge to say that although this documentary evidence because if I was involved in an enterprise like that I wouldn't want there to be documentary evidence either but you've gone further and said that you've challenged people to prove thousand dollar challenge and so on that Hitler ordered or even knew of the liquidation of the European Jews before, say, October 1943. Now, it's not new to say, nobody has said there's this documentary written, written evidence, and if you're doing unmentionable things, you don't mention them, particularly in print. But why, what is the key piece of evidence that makes you go way out and say he didn't know, that Hitler of all people didn't know or didn't order? What, uh, most of all, does your case rest on? A, a chain of evidence a chain of documentary evidence that none of the other established historians has either found or mentioned that they have found, which proves or tends to prove the precise opposite. Namely, the documents that you can single out as being uh, acceptable evidence. In other words, not hearsay, not post-war statements by some Nazi gangsters in some post-war international cri uh, war crimes trial, but wartime documents. There is a chain of important documents starting in about 1938 going right through to 1943 indicating firstly that Adolf Hitler was issuing vetoes saying 
this is not to be done to the Jews. They are not to be liquidated. And the word liquidate is the word that's used, not words of uh, ambivalent meaning like the words in that speech extract that the viewers heard at the beginning of this program, which could be translated many different ways, not just by exterminate. It's a, it's a word of, of deliciously, um, typically German ambiguousness. But Hitler uses the word not liquidate, no liquidation. And uh, this but change the one, of the goes one, right the one quote you've read in your book about no liquidation and dwell on is to do with one specific incident and you extrapolated it in the introduction to make it appear that it's a general policy no, it's but the actually one it, was, it was a very much narrower than you admit it to be even if this was the case, which it isn't, and I'm not going to buy that even if it was the case we want to know why have the other historians not mentioned that even one document like that exists and Adolf Hitler saying no liquidation of even a tiny train load of Jews, which I don't believe for one minute. This is a, when you read the whole file of, of these particular telephone conversations we're talking about, the telephone conversations between Heinrich Himmler, the chief of the SS, and Reinhard Heydrich, the chief of the Gestapo. When you read the whole folder of conversations like that, you get an unmistakable flavor of what they're really talking about. Well, let's take that one example. Let's go to you first, Gerald Fleming, on that. Are you convinced by that evidence that no liquidation in that one case? Uh, no. I think, first of all, that the contention that Hitler did not know until early October of 43 that uh, the Jews were being liquidated really is not tenable. And uh, I think that in the first instance, it's a question of scale. Let, let's be quite clear. We're talking about the six million, and not just about the liquidation of Russian partisan Jews, which, of course, Hitler certainly knew about and was probably responsible for. No, but uh, you did make the statement that until October 43, uh, Hitler was not specifically aware that the Jews were being liquidated. Now, you mentioned... Systematically liquidated as a program to get rid of all Jews from Europe. Which must be clear about One of the statements in your book... Yes. May the 1st, 1942, you quoted Greiser to Himmler that the current special treatment program of 100,000 Jews in his own Gau had been authorized by Himmler with high risk agreement. And then your next sentence is Hitler was not mentioned. Indeed. Now, this letter, letter yeah. of the 1st of May 42, which you quote, um, in which Hitler is indeed not mentioned, I will now counter quote. The letter of the 21st of November 42, again by Greiser, and if I may be permitted, because it's a vital letter, I would like to translate it word for word. Reichsführer, this is a top secret letter. Uh, in your letter of the 27th of June 1942, you authorized me to give special treatment, we know that the word Sonderlösung, special treatment, means liquidation. You authorize me to give special treatment to those members of the Polish nation of whom it can be proved that they are suffering from incurable tuberculosis. I know this letter. This, I nonetheless must quote it. This special Could treatment... Could you go to the key, key sentences? Yes. The key sentence is, in the end, Breiser asks, is it necessary that the complaints or the doubts raised by one of the doctors who is supposed to participate in this has to go before Hitler again and the translation is I personally do not think that Hitler has to be asked again all the more because when last I spoke with him regarding the Jews he told me to act according to my own judgment well now the judgment of Greiser was that uh, between the 8th of December 1941 and September 42, 55,000 Jews were killed, not to mention the Poles, suffer from tuberculosis. So I say that there can be no question whatsoever that Adolf Hitler did not know that the Jews were being liquidated until October 43. This is an incontrovertible statement that sometime prior to November 42, Greiser, the Gauleiter of Butterland, attempted did indeed... to discuss the matter with Hitler, and Hitler said, for heaven's sake, leave me to fight the war. I'm a soldier fighting a I'm war. I don't not. want to be bothered with the Jewish problem. I'm afraid not. Uh, he says, do as you think best. He says, ich möchte, dass sie nach eigenem Ermessen verfahren. You can act according to your judgment, Hitler knowing full well. Aha. Uh -huh. what, what's the proof of that? Full well what Greiser had already been done. Now you're speculating And again. the conspiracy of silence, you see, that exists all the time, the dissembling, the concealment, the camouflage words were such, Hitler had to appear whiter than white. 
he did not have to have a document put to him, he did not put the signature document compromising him, and this falls into the pattern. Then, then how do you explain that in October 1943, when Himmler, the chief of the SS, considers the program is complete, that he then stands up before the uh, SS Gruppenführer and the Gauleiters and he says, I have had to take this severe decision myself. What else does that mean that, that, that Himmler himself is the one who started the ball rolling? My answer to that would be the letter of the 28th of July 1942, case 11, uh, document 626. And in this document, from the uh, Haupt uh, Gruppenführer Berger in the SS Hauptamt to Himmler, Himmler replies... Mark the exact wording, please. Yes, the exact wording. Do not the publish the decree defining Jews. Such foolish precision ties our hands. The Eastern territories will be freed of all Jews. I alone am responsible to the Führer and do not want any discussion. You will receive Lama's note on record. Where is the word Say, about murdering and killing? All he's saying is that the Eastern territories will be freed of the Jews. Where were they supposed to go? They were being deported there. That was the last place. And therefore being freed of the Jews... You haven't read the other documents in that folder, and it's perfectly plain. They're not talking about Oscar Bieter in the sense of being everything up to the Russian front. They're talking about but the Oscar Bieter as being what was the original Oscar Bieter. Let me at that point come this to you... This is a question of semantics. Yes, well, there's a, there is a more general point, and I want to come to Professor Waite here, but there is the general point about this whole movement of the millions of Jews to the East. The thing that seems to me utterly incredible, even if you're arguing on special words and so on, that, that in fact, whether it's four or five or six million Jews, could be moved to the East, and Hitler, who inquired for progress reports in other areas, mislaid but four million citizens. That's a big question. There's a big question here, which everyone else is ignoring. Four million? I mean, the income why tax people earth, must have complained. Hell, Where the hell are they gone? Why the hell is Adolf Hitler picking up six million Jews in Western Europe at a time in the middle of the war when they lack transports? Space even to ship guns and troops to the eastern front, and he's shipping these six million Jews thousands of miles across to the east, and then he's bumping them off. Why doesn't he do it in the west? For because the answer is the deportation, the dislodging of the Jews from the west and shipping them back to the east, that's Hitler's orders, and the people are obeying it. What's happening at the terminal at the other end, that's the ad hoc decision taken by the people on the spot. Professor this is Wade. A question nobody asks. Professor the big Wade. questions are the ones that people overlook. I'd like to take some big questions that are at once big, important, and very simple. There are three questions that Mr. Irving, in this deplorable book, I don't say this, I don't use this word, I don't use this word often in treating fellow historians' books, but this book, in my judgment... My book is written from sources, yours is not. Yours is written from other people's books, and that's not the way to write history. I would like to have a chance for two or three minutes... Carry on. Uh, ...to say that I, why I believe that this book constitutes a calumny, not only against the victims of Hitler's terror, what your but against, against uh, decent historical scholarship. The three questions I would ask simply on precisely the question Mr. Irving raises in his book and is re-raising tonight, namely, what was Hitler's responsibility for the genocide, for the massacre of six million Jews? The three questions are these, simple but terribly important. None of these does Mr. Irving deal with. What kind of person was Adolf Hitler did he have the kind of motivation that made him want to kill the Jews? Did he plan to kill the Jews? Second question, did he have the opportunity? Thirdly, did it happen? Now the first question, what kind of person was Adolf Hitler? Was he the kind that wanted to kill the Jews? Irving argues at the outset of his book that Hitler was not a demon. Indeed, his purpose in the book is to de-demonize Adolf Hitler. And he finds, Irving finds, that Hitler was really, quote, an ordinary human being. I want to come back to that, because I don't always agree with A.J.P. Taylor, but I agree with this, that the job of the historian is neither to defend or to condemn, it is to seek to understand. Get to the point. Irving does not help us understand Hitler. He's crashingly naive about Hitler's com the complexity of his personality, which totally escapes him. Hitler was a divided, deeply divided person. 
At the same time, he was both rational, irrational, brilliant, demented, pragmatic, fanatic, brave, cowardly. Was he an anti-Semite? Cruel, kind. Was he an anti-Semite? He was an anti-Semite of enormous proportions in ten seconds. What was you'll get to it. What was I want attitude to, I, on I want the night of broken glass? I did not interrupt you. This is important. It is indeed, and I shall speak, please. I did not interrupt you. I want fairness no, here. You had your three minutes. Thank you. Did he desire, did he plan to kill the Jews? Throughout his life, was he an anti-Semite, I'm asked? He was an anti-Semite to the point that hating the Jews and wanting them destroyed was the organizing principle of his I'm life. Him so much so that the one word Jew would convert him into something that looked like that. That one word was sufficient to produce that picture, that portrait, at once demonic and defensive. But how would you, one, how would you right, nail, how would you right. nail Hitler's responsibility? I'm going to answer, I shall, but can I shall can ask, I have answer 30 first. Seconds here? When I, you, I'm going to ask, you answer his it. question first. Well, yes, but you've had the three minutes. No, not so, quite. So, so not, I want this one well, point. Right, give him the one point. I'm counting this. In 1922, is he an anti-Semite? Hitler said in 1922, as soon as I have the power, I shall have gallows after gallows erected, for example, in Munich on the Marienplatz. Then the Jews will be hanged one after another, and they will stay hanging until they stink. They will stay hanging as long as hygienically possible. I as soon as they are the untied, the then the next group will I follow. The same about the communists, he didn't do it. I want just to ask no one, one point about, about Hitler's about attitude Jews to the in Jews. To your question, he was an anti-Semite. On the night of Britain's wanted to kill the Jews. in November 1938, when the first terrible, ghastly anti-Jewish pogroms began in Germany, what was Hitler's attitude? I'll tell you. This is from the files of Rudolf Hess, deputy Führer. A three-line instruction goes out during the small hours of the morning after all the terrible outrages have begun on Goebbels' instigation. The words are on the express orders from the very highest level there is to be no arson whatsoever no destruction of jewish businesses or any kind of acts like that under any circumstances uh, on n no case at all but this is after the event uh, this is and Hitler it, setting in to try and was, stop it and before when he was that told was his attitude well, to the jews that was when they were found out that was when the world publicity was bad and before the event he is officially reported as squealing with delight at the plan. Officially reported. Squealing with delight. Officially reported. And of course when he's what found out he changes. What official report? Let these me are ask, documents. Let, yes, let me ask you, you a very... Part. Why let, have the historians not printed documents ask, like these? Let, Where is this in your book? Let me ask, you, a, like let me ask you a very simple question because it seems to me that your, you, look, your motivation book, is the most interesting in thing in this. In 926 pages, there are 10 pages concerning the Jews. These are the 10 pages concerning the Jews. Right. Let's discuss the rest of the book. Well, that's Hitler your attitude to the Jews England. in any case. Hitler and <laughs> Churchill, Hitler and Stalin, Hitler and the Russian front. Yeah, no, but let me, let me just get to this point. All right, let's Why? discuss the Jews. I'm, all through, let me, yeah, right. well, all through your career, there has been this double thing indicated physically there. I am not an anti mate. Well, Why should I ever be an anti Put it this way. I'm somebody trying to get at the truth. I, listen, if you're, if you're finding the truth, Sorry, just a minute. We have, we'll try and come to you in a moment. But if you're trying to get to the truth, then everybody's for you, of course. But the point he is... He's not trying to get to the truth. David Frost and his people spent the last week telephoning around Germany trying to find one person who would say I was wrong. One of the people they phoned is a person who's sitting in the second row of the audience. Perhaps we can have a chance to talk to him. He's a man who knows because he was the uh, personal assistant of Adolf Hitler himself for the three years in which this extermination program was going on. He was a personal assistant, he was a combat soldier who had been posted to Adolf Hitler's staff as his personal assistant. He was an eyewitness. Yes. All right. He was a man who knows what went on. Shall we ask him whether the Jewish extermination program was ever discussed at Hitler's headquarters because he was personally right. sworn to and then we'll, the And then I'll ask you the two questions I wanted to ask you. Herr Schulze, was there ever any discussion of the Jewish extermination program in Hitler's headquarters? Yes. Uh, I hope you will believe me. I can assure you, Mr. Irving and Mr. Foss, that in the very long two daily military conferences every day or in nor in the so-called table talks during the night with his personal stuff I heard never any word about 
examination of the Jewish people or I heard the word final solution. I was two times as a witness All in... Right. Let me interrupt you for one second there. But would you say that you were always privy to policy meetings about the most secret matters? Were you always privy? Uh, I was by, very often by such meetings, but not at all. Not at all of them. Here. But uh, not at all I them. was a so long the, the time, four years in the headquarters, and uh, he has spoken very often in the military speeches, and I was a present uh, I have brought there. one member and here. I couldn't afford yeah. to bring every member of Hitler's staff Well, we haven't brought question. anybody, and we... I brought this man here no. at my own we, expense, no, no. and I think that is sufficient to raise well, no. doubts in the minds of no. people who don't ask but the course, primary as forces, he told just, us, as he, but just buy the book from the library. As he told us, as he told us uh, before, Obviously, he wasn't present at all, all of the vital secrets. Then why meetings. did you ask him? Why did you telephone him and ask him if he could well, prove me wrong? We didn't invite him here because of that reason. Because yes, he wasn't of course. present at the important Because he meeting. said he wasn't going to support but, you, so you didn't invite but let him. Let me just ask you a question. That, That's I mean, not the way to write you, history, Mr. Frost. I write history. I ask all the sources. I have kept out nothing unpleasant about no, Hitler. You, there's so many I have put in all the dirt Hitler. about Hitler that I could find. Yes. I put in how he was going to un, uh, he was going to unload Lake Ladoga to wash away Leningrad. I put in how he was going to exterminate the male population of Stalingrad, I put in how he think? ordered the commissars liquidated, I put in everything I could find that was dirty about Hitler. Right. I can so do you nothing. think he was one That's of the Do you think he was one of the most diabolical mass murderers in the history of the world? Are we talking about the extermination of six million Jews? Do you the answer is he created the atmosphere in which it happened, there's no doubt. Because he rode to power and anti Semitism. That's the horse that he took out of the stables to get in, in into the Reich Chancery. When he was once in the Reich Chancery in nineteen thirty three he forgot about that horse. He dismounted, but the Nazis, the gangsters underneath him, they kept on riding. But Adolf Hitler became a, a soldier. He became a statesman, then he became a soldier. And he rode off to war on the Eastern Front, and the Jewish problem was a, a nuisance to him, and it was an embarrassment. And that's when the rest of the book happened, Mr. Frost. Forget the ten pages. That's not Adolf Hitler. That's no, the gangsters. those ten pages are essential to whitewashing Hitler. You have to deal with that. Whitewashing Hitler after what I told you about the dirt that I put in about him? No, but this There's was the most hundreds of pages there about how he ordered British commandos executed without trial. This isn't white. Do you think he was an evil tyrant? Do you think he was an evil tyrant? Do you think he was an evil tyrant? Do you think, answer the question, we have ways of making you talk. Do you think he was an evil tyrant? I will go further. I will say he was as evil as Churchill. He was as evil as Roosevelt. He was as evil as Truman. I am ashamed when I work, read through the private papers of these statesmen too, as I have done in the United States and in, and in Moscow and behind the Iron Curtain, and you see that when all these people get to power, they all forget their morals. They all do dirty things. Not just Adolf Hitler. And that's do you the mean that Adolf Hitler was not worse than Churchill? Well, it's a Churchill crime to have to read it, I agree, it's the most appalling piece of, of prose. But my Kampf isn't a crime. What Hitler did not do is glory in the massacres, in the way Churchill did, for example. If you go down to, to his it's underground what? cabinet what? room, if you go to his underground cabinet room in, in off Westminster Square there, you'll find that Churchill has got serious copy pictures of the damage he did to Dresden in 1945. And that's something that no British person can be proud of. But do you really not think that the crime, the crimes of, it's a, it's a, it, it's a crime, incidentally, that tonight's program is 25 minutes because there are so many people we'd like to include from there. But are you seriously saying, for whatever motives of your own, that you can actually put the crimes of Adolf Hitler, even the ones you admit, not the ones that I think transparently you try not to admit? Once we remove the six million Jews, then we start talking Turkey. And why do you want to do that? This is a question of wanting to do it. idea. Once it's you remove the six a, million Jews. It's the biggest embarrassment of my life when I got halfway through drafting this book and I found that there wasn't a single document that would convict Adolf Hitler of what he had done. The kind of document that would be used to convict Adolf right. Hitler that would not stand up in a magistrate court to convict a gypsy of bicycle stealing. But in, in 30 years' time, in Uganda, will there be an actual written document? I want in 100 years' time people to look back and say that it wasn't until 1977.